So the last time uh, we were talking about moral philosophy, so we're going to continue talking about that today. So we talked about Kant, and we said that according to Kant, the important thing is that we respect other people. Um, people are different than animals because they have a kind of dignity and rationality. And this is the basis of human, mainly human rights these days and human rights treaties. And then we said we had roles, and roles was a kind of egalitarian, which means that we should have some redistribution or distributing the wealth because the people who make more effort or have more natural ability they are got this advantage because of their family situation or kind of luck so we should redistribute the wealth but some people should be allowed to earn more than others if this has better better situation for society like the example of doctors earning more than bus drivers then the doctors will have the uh, poor for people. So we said that this is generally, this kind of theory is generally used today in our tax systems, using progressive taxation. So we finished discussing there. So one other uh, philosopher, more modern philosopher, is McIntyre. And he says there's something that Rawls and Kant didn't consider, and that is uh, this narr narrative conception of the self. That is, people's <coughs> traditions or the society where they were uh, brought up in. So, do you understand patronism? patronism? It means you're from your country or feel proud of your country. So, narrative means like storytelling. Narrative is a story. So he says, once you accept this narrative aspect of moral reflection, you will notice that we can never seek for the good or exercise the virtues only as individuals. We all approach our circumstances as bearers of particular social identities. I am someone's son or daughter, a citizen of this or that city. I belong to this clan. What is that clan? Clan. It's like a group, right? Or family. That tribe. Tribe is in the old days. Uh, just one tribe lived together. This nation. Nation is country. What is good for me has to be good for someone who inhabits these roles. So, he's saying that we all have our own idea. We all have our own story. So, if I'm born in a different tribe, a different family, a different group, I'm going to have different ideas or different moral philosophies than the other people. And I'm going to think about the other people. So we talked about inheritance for money, but we can also inherit moral philosophy or thinking from our family, my city, my nation. Okay? So what do we inherit? Expectations, obligations, duties, and so on. <coughs> These constitute the given of my life, my moral starting part point. This is in part what gives my life its moral particularity. So you guys, we have some people here who come from different backgrounds, right? One clear difference is we don't have military service in Ireland or in Denmark, right? But perhaps in Korea you have military service, so people can have this obligation. They think I have the obligation to do military service, okay? That's your moral philosophy. You think that's the right thing to do because of your country, your family's past, and so on. But somebody from another culture might think, no, uh, I shouldn't have to do military service 
for one year, two years. Okay? They might think that's against my freedom. They might have a different moral thinking. So McIntyre is making this point that people's moral philosophy is very accepted, affected by their past. You could see that, for example, a lot of people with religion, they choose their religion based on their family. And religion has its own moral philosophy. So if you're from a different religion, could be because you were born in that family, you enter this religion and you have that kind of philosophy compared to people from another uh, nation or another family. So he's just adding this on. He says that Kant and Rawls don't think about this effect enough in the moral philosophy, right? So you guys, <coughs> apart from other ideas, you also have this influence from your family, from your country, past. So let's discuss first this question. Do you agree there is a kind of obligation of solidarity or membership? Do you understand solidarity? Solidarity means sticking together, working together. Membership means you're a member of a country or a business or so on. Okay? So do you think that because you're in a group with other people, you have a kind of obligation also to think about them, think about their culture and the way they do things. Okay? So when you're making your decisions, you're not just thinking as an individual, you're also thinking as part of the group. How your decision affects the group where you that or your country. Okay? So discuss this question with your partner. So you have your own moral philosophy, right? But do you think you also have an obligation to the country or group that you're a member of, apart from yourself and your own ideas? I don't believe in uh, military service, but I feel that I have an obligation because my country, the other people are doing the military service. So I have an obligation of solidarity with the other people to do the military service, right? Or to choose that that's the correct decision. Okay. difference. Korea has a high collectivism score, right? So we would expect perhaps Korean people to say, yes, I can, even though I have my own moral philosophy, right, I have to think about the group and make a, I have an obligation to think about the group and their idea, their moral philosophy, perhaps join in with the group, right? So, uh, McIntyre is saying that this affects some people, right? This can affect people. They feel they have a kind of obligation to the group. So let's discuss the next question. So patriotism is not a virtue but a vice. A prejudice 
in favour of one's own kind that we should try to overcome. Do you agree? Do you understand this word? Patriotism? Is it easy to pronounce? Patriotism means love of your own country compared to other countries. I love my country a lot. Why? Because my country. I'm very patriotic. I love my country. But not so much other countries. Mainly my country. Okay? So is this a, it's not a virtue, it's a vice. It's a prejudice. Prejudice means uh, like some unfair thinking, unfair thinking in favor of our own group or our own kind that we should try to overcome. So we should try to overcome our feelings of patriot, patriotism. So discuss with your partner. Do you agree or not? Did you give your opinion to your partner? Pretend like I asked you the question, right? Answer the question with your partner first, then if I ask you, your answer is prepared. Do you agree that patriotism is a, is a vice, prejudice, or not? Think patriotism would be a bad thing? Yes. Do you agree? Well, Kim Sang Hee, what do you think? Virtue or advice? Yes, so Ban Ki moon would say it's advice, right? So before I heard a speech of Ban Ki moon and he said that people shouldn't think about uh, other <coughs> their country and other countries, or their city and other cities, or their even their family or other families. He said that people should think just uh, about everybody equally, right? 
they shouldn't be prejudiced for their family or their community or their country. So he is the president of the United Nations, right? Or the secretary general of the United Nations. So he thinks that people should be just global citizens without uh, much patriot patriotism, right? So this is global business department, right? <laughs> so I guess that in the global business department, we should also think like Ban Ki-moon, right? Agree with Ban Ki-moon that these days we should be global citizens, okay? So the last question, discuss with your partner. What is moral character? Is it what you tend to do, or is it your beliefs and your attitudes? So what do you think moral character is? Is it what you do usually, or is it what you believe and your attitude? Talked a little bit in ethics. We said people can't have knowledge, right? Okay, so it's like manner or how you behave, right? So we said in the ethics that you have the knowledge, but there's a problem. Sometimes people have the knowledge. Even though they have the knowledge, they don't do something, right? Like one guy is on the street being attacked by two guys, and then there's five guys around that they know they should help, right? They know that's the right thing to do, but they need some character, right? Character, they need to act, right? To, to save the other person. So we need not just the belief, we also need our actions, what we tend to do uh, in order to have a moral character. Okay. So do you have any questions about this part? Philosophy is a kind of complicated subject. Um, do you want us to, uh, to learn and to know what all those philosophers say and think? Just the main point, just the main point. So for example, you should know what the difference principle is, idea is, from Rawls, and you should know what the main, Kant's main idea is, but you don't have to learn the vocabulary. So Kant's main idea is respecting human dignity, means treating a person as an ends, not a means, okay? Just know the main idea of each uh, part. Any other questions? Yes? What is the good uh, nation like? Uh, I think Western religion is the uh, best thing. Yes. So I will ask you what is the good national flow? Uh, the answer is that anyway, it's better if you look at just I'm thinking about my family, that's the lowest form, right? You should think about 
you can think about your country before your family. For example, so people, that's, some people might say that nationalism is a good thing because you're not thinking about myself, I'm thinking about my country, right? But better than thinking about my country is thinking about the world, thinking about all of the, all of the citizens, right? So John F. Kennedy had a famous saying which was, think not uh, what your country can do for you, but think what you can do for your country. Actually, John F. Kennedy stole that line from his uh, university president. His university president said, think not what your alumni can do for you, but what your, you can do for your alumni. Alumni is the graduates of the university, right? So you can see we have just the university helping the people in the university, then up bigger scale up to the country. But bigger than that, right, then we could say, take John F. Kennedy's phrase and use that for the world, right? Think not what the world or can do for you, but think what you can do for the world. Right? You can quote me about that. Maybe I'll be famous. Someday, right? So instead of so for example, I have uh, some contract which I can send to Ireland because I'm from Ireland. Or I could be honest and I could tell the company you should go to the UK because the UK has better facilities, right? then I shouldn't, it's not right for me to tell them to go to Ireland. I should tell them to go to the UK, right? even though I'm from Ireland, for example. And also, these days when people ask me about going to Europe, I tell them, don't go to Ireland, <laughs> as tourists, right? If I was just thinking about, I'm Irish, I would tell everybody, oh, Ireland is great, go there for holidays, right? But it's not true. <laughs> Italy is better, right? <laughs> Food tastes nicer. They have a lot more art, the weather is better, they have nice beaches, and, right? So if you go to Europe, go to Italy, not to Ireland. <laughs> or Barcelona. Barcelona is nicer than Ireland. Okay? So can you get the idea? But if I was just thinking nationalist, I'd say, be doing Irish dancing, and trying to advertise Ireland. I'm wearing green today. <laughs> not because I'm thinking about nationalism, right? So also, it's also uh, <coughs> when you're working with people, you don't have to just hang around with the people from your own country, right? You should try to work. Uh, in the UN, they also could have that problem because they have people from different countries, right? But in the UN, they encourage people, don't just hang out with people from your own country, okay? Like go out after work or hang do things together, or always be in the group with the person from your own country, that you should try to mingle with people from the other nationalities and mix together, okay? And so you're not just thinking uh, about your own nationality, okay? Thinking more global way. <coughs> so luckily you have some foreign students in here who came on the exchange. Right, so you can, it's one reason for doing the group work together with the foreign students. Okay, trying to be a global citizen. Okay, any more questions? Yes? I wonder if there is correct, correct answer or not. There, there is. In what? <coughs> correct answer or not. In philosophy, the most act like psychology, a lot of answers can be correct, yes. Many answers can be correct. Your own moral philosophy is what you believe. So Kant says that we need to have respect for the other people, right? That's the basic. And then we can make the laws about this. And then after that, you're free to have your own moral philosophy. That's Kant's idea. So is there Yes, even philosophers. The philosophers have different ideas. So people can have different ideas too, right? So people can't... We have to make laws, and we have to have also ethics, right? Ethical behavior. So we, we have... If you have one moral philosophy, you have to have a rational or logical explanation for your philosophy. You have to be able to make an argument. This is why I want this, because of this. Okay? So, 
uh, we have common way to make the laws, which we said is often for human rights is based on Kant's philosophy. We have a, these days a political system like taxes, which is based on Rawls' philosophy, a little bit, right? Redistributing the taxes. And then people have their own ideas after that. Okay? So when we have ethics, different people have different ideas, but we have to make an argument in a logical way with other people about our philosophy. Okay. Any more questions? <coughs> okay, so then uh, let's move on to the ethical dilemma part. So we are, first we are going to do a case study which is similar to the one you're doing for the midterm uh, project. So uh, just to give us do this, it might help also with doing the midterm project. So we are going to read the case. And first of all, our first job is to follow the steps. So we want to identify who are the stakeholders in the case. So this case is about freedom of speech. Do you understand freedom of speech? Yes. Case. This is from 2014, from the competition we talked about. So, uh, in the can you start reading the case? Yes. Constitution. Change the constitution means change the law. So they wanted to change the law to say that in California only you can only have a marriage between a man and a woman. Okay? And this guy made a donation to support this law. Okay? Do you understand donation? Yes. So let's continue. Uh, I with I. Uh, e drop J. Amen. 
necessity. See here, do you understand boycott? Yes. What does boycott mean? Don't buy Don't buy, right? So this can be a problem for companies, right? They can get boycotted. If people think they did something unethical, then they can be boycotted by the customers. So people think that the unethical thing was that um, Mr. Ike donated money to support restricting marriage to between one man and one woman. So other organizations, or we said they call here proponents of marriage equality and gay rights. Okay, they're not happy about that. And they want boycott. For example, okay, Cupid website. So let's continue. So uh, Kim Beijing. According, right? According, yes. According to me, this is an example of free speech being used effectively to combat intolerant speech. However, some journalists are questioning whether the episode undercuts the world growing image of Silicon Valley as a marketplace of ideas and diversity of thought, and whether in this case the term tech were surrendered to political correctness enforced through a public shaming on social media. Andrew Sullivan, Sullivan of Prominence advocate for marriage equality has objected to its treatment one thing. When people's needs and careers are subject to litmus tests and find if they do not publicly renounce what may well be their sincere conviction. We have crossed the line, this is capitalism applied by civil actors. This is the definition of intolerance. Okay. So we can see that some journalists are uh, saying that the tech world in Silicon Valley means like in the, it's the main area in the US where all, a lot of these internet companies are based, right? So it has to be politically correct, otherwise it will be shamed in public, right? So journalists were saying that they might have to be careful. So. Other people, Andrew Sullivan thinks that he is, can have some free speech, right? He can have his own idea. Uh, he says here, sincere conviction. That might be his idea, his sincere conviction. So he thinks that the boycotters are being intolerant. They're not allowing he to give his free speech or free opinion, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this together, okay, and try, we're going to be looking at from the business point of view, so we are going to be uh, working in Mozilla, right, and we have to decide, we're going to be deciding what to do, what action uh, should we take as Mozilla, okay, so for example, should we fire CEO or ask him to reinstate him in his job, should we make some new policy, that kind of thing, right? From the company's point of view. So let's start with the first one. So if you want, you can uh, turn over the back of the page and make a kind of uh, 
chart, we are going to be saying who are the stakeholders, what are the stakeholders' interests, right? Later we'll be talking about their rights, right? So you can make a kind of a table. On this, we can have stakeholders. On the left, okay, so we'll start with the left column, stakeholder. Who are the stakeholders? Okay, then we have their claim, stakeholders' claims next. Okay, later we'll need uh, capabilities, if we can develop their capabilities or not. Later we'll need rights, okay, so we can make this kind of a uh, table. So, first job is we can discuss with our partner who are the stakeholders in this case. as there are. Are there three stakeholders? There might some in some case there might just be two. Just it depends on the case. Did you search about this on the internet? Ah, okay. So you found the story in three? Okay. You can also do that if you want. You can check on the internet about that. You have the internet here. Do you use Mozilla Firefox? Yes, I do. You do? It's a browser like Chrome or Internet Explorer. Mozilla. Firefox, yes. So then let's start write down our stakeholders and our stakeholder claims. So who can tell me a stakeholder? Are the main stakeholders okay. People who are a stakeholder means people who have an interest or are affected by the case. Society. The claim of society. What does society want from Mozilla? I think two two claim in society. One is the permit the marriage law. Same sex couple. Okay. And other parties don't claim, uh, don't 
Polito. So we have different type. We can put down two different stakeholders here, maybe in society. You mean people yes. who support same-sex marriage and people who don't support same-sex marriage? Okay, so we you said we can have supporters. You can just put SS here, same-sex marriage. Okay, and then we have opponents. same-sex marriage. They want the support. What do the supporters of same-sex marriage want from from the company? People like uh, Andrew, last guy, Andrew, what does he want? We saw at the end, the last few lines. To leave him. Yeah. Yes, he's on rights to speech. Okay, they want him, the CEO, to be able to... The CEO can give his opinion, right? On same-sex marriage, publicly. So that, that's like a free speech. Okay? So we can see that uh, some supporters of same sex marriage, like uh, OkCupid okay dating site, they want to fire the CEO, right? Yes. They don't want, they're not going to use Mozilla unless they fire the CEO and maybe change their policy, right? Do something change their policy, make sure it doesn't happen again. But well, we have some other opponents of the same-sex marriage who think that's okay. He can give money to this uh, organization. That's his opinion and his free speech. Okay, so what other stakeholders do we have? Who else is affected by this? Right, so we have Brandon, the, the CEO, right? What claim does he have? What's his claim? What does he want? Similar to the one of this opponents of same-sex marriage? Yes. He wants to be able to give his opinion publicly on same-sex marriage, yes. right? Yes. So same one, similar here. Yes. Make the donations, right? Yes. Okay, any other stakeholders? Customers of Mozilla, like OkCupid okay, or Firefox users. Uh, people using the browser, right, to access the other websites. So 
What do they want? Customers. What do you think? Yes? Some of them want them to to stop using the Firefox, like to, to change the policy. Mm -hmm. And the others, they don't care, they just want to use it. Okay, so we have some people who want to change the policy prior to the CEO, right? And some people, others, not concerned. A little bit similar to this one, right? Any other stakeholders here? There are a lot of them. Hmm? There are a lot of other stakeholders. Yes, who else? Employees. Uh, employees, consumers, board members, proponents, gay rights, and okay, journalists, and so employees of the company. What do they want? I think it's the same like before. Some of them want to change the policy and some of them don't care. Okay, so we have some of them want to change the policy, some don't care. What do you think they want generally? Change the policy. So you think generally they want to fire the CEO or not the employees? Maybe change the policy. Do the employees want to fire the CEO? Okay. I think I apparently think. because it says in, in the article that uh, it was forced. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, it resigned under pressure from employees. Okay. So they probably want to change the policy. Okay. So there may be some employees who believe that they support the same-sex marriage, right? They want. They don't want the CEO who uh, is against that, right? There might even be people who are in the same-sex marriage in the employees, right? They could already be in that situation. Okay, so uh, any other stakeholders? Their claim? Journalists, maybe. Journalists? What would journalists' claim be? Um, they claim um, the the image of Silicon Valley can be damaged. So are journalists worried about the image of Silicon Valley? Yes. Would that not be more Silicon Valley? Silicon Valley worried about the image of Silicon Valley? Um, yeah. Okay. I think journalists are getting this situation like society, they are like into uh, opposite sides. But most of the majority, I guess, it's uh, for firing the CEO. So would journalists be more on the side of free speech and giving your opinion, or not? I, it's hard to say. It's not really. I would say 50-50. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, we have these four main stakeholders we look at for the moment, right? Uh, society, we can talk about more how it can be affected, right? The CEO, we could... We could also add in here maybe CEOs of other companies, because how this affects this CEO is going to affect the CEOs of other companies too, right? In the future, uh, customers and employees, okay? And we think about their claims. Then the next uh, time we'll continue. So bring your case study to the next class and uh, try to find the correct way to solve this problem. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no.